Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. I am very sick today, so hopefully I can get through this review. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, calmer and slower than I norm <clears throat> normally do in most videos. So, before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. Otherwise, I just finished watching Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is the fourth film in this series. Now, if you ask me in the past, maybe a few years ago, what my least favorite Harry Potter film was, there's a very good chance I would have said this one. But I feel like I've come around on it a little bit. I still have, I'm still very critical of it, but I have come around a little bit on it. So, I do think this one's better than Chamber of Secrets. And uh, even Chamber of Secrets might not be the bottom anymore, just because uh, Fantastical Beasts exists. I've seen the first one, I didn't love it. It was alright, I didn't love it. Um, and I've heard bad things about the next two, so Fantastical Beasts will probably be the at the very bottom of this uh, ranking in this series when we get there. So, yeah. <clears throat> in this film, basically, we are... Uh, there is a... What do I call it? Uh, sort of like a, a, a the Wizard Olympics. So it's called the uh, Tri-Wizard Tournament. And it takes one student who must be 17 years of age or older from each wizarding... Uh, school and it pits them in a surprisingly deadly competition to compete for glory and all that. So, but uh, somehow, and I will talk about this more later, Harry, despite being only 14 years old in this, and despite the fact that Hogwarts already selected Cedric, which is Robert Pattinson's debut role in a film, by the way, um, somehow Harry is also chosen from the Goblet of Fire. Uh, so he is basically forced to compete even though he really doesn't want to. So yeah, basically if you wanted to make this film sound really uh, morally questionable, you could sum it up like this. Uh, a bunch of adults force a 14 year old boy to fight in a deadly competition for his life. <laughs> that, that's kind of what this one's about. Um, yeah, so I've come around on it because it's really nostalgic for me because I'm 23 years old now. Uh, so I don't, I did not feel this way watching her just now, but when I was younger, this movie came out when I was five years old, so it must have been when I was like 14 or 15. This was the movie that got me to have a huge crush on Emma Watson at the time. Now I still do have a crush on Emma Watson today, but not this one, right? Not this 14 or 15 year old, whatever. Um, she looks like a baby now, but at the time, back then, this is the film that really got me to like, you know, fall for her. So I'm nostalgic for, for that reason. But other than that, it's not terrible. Um, it introduces the actual physical Lord Voldemort with Ralph Fiennes for the first time and his Death Eaters. Uh, finds a way to involve them in the plot in a pretty significant and good way. Uh, the climax of the film at the end is very strong. Cedric is surprisingly a respectable character. Um, yeah, and uh, the, the main thing for me, the number one thing, is of course the cast, their rapport with each other, and most importantly, the drama. There's a ton of drama in this. Basically, the majority of the film, Hermione, Ron, and Harry are just bickering at each other. That is all they're doing in this. And in other franchises, it might get on your nerves or get annoying. Here, it doesn't. It feels natural, it's earned, and uh, I like it. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, uh,. So before we get into our our con section, let's talk about the, I don't even know what the title of this segment, I've been doing this for each movie so far, um, just because I have to. It's I'm not the only one who does this, I don't want to be the, I don't want you to think of me as the one weird guy who's, um, <clears throat> you know, thinking about things that he shouldn't. I'm not alone in this, there are hundreds, thousands of other Harry Potter fans who talk about this stuff as well, for the record. But I don't know what to title it, but basically adult things in Harry Potter children's movies. So this time, episode four of adult things in Harry Potter, uh, I actually thought there was going to be none, but there, I actually think there's the most so far. Um, <clears throat> they might not be as prevalent, but they still stood out to me, So because I'm someone who looks for the details. So for adult slash JK Rowling sex BDSM dungeon stuff in Harry Potter, unintentionally, and this episode, we have the first one, well, actually the last one, but the first one that comes to mind is uh, one of the Death Eaters says to Albus Dumbledore, 
I'll show you mine if you show me yours. That is, uh, that is like one of the most suspicious things he could possibly say. That is like, I'm pretty sure that's how... Yeah, I'm not even gonna finish my sentence there, but I probably lost my own virginity with a line similar to that. So, <laughs> that when I was like 15 or 16, so that is a no-no line to say. Uh, number two, Myrtle. So I actually forgot, I didn't realize she did this, so I predicted something by accident. So I said in the past that Myrtle being a ghost who can go into the girls' and boys' bathrooms at free will is very suspicious for a universe like this. Um, Obviously, it's a kid's movie, so they're playing it for innocent, but, like, the whole point of this little segment is to um, make it, like, what would happen in real life. So, in real life, I thought, you know what, that's not good. We can't have ghosts running around Hogwarts in the children's bathrooms. Well, it actually, they straight up use it for a bit in this. So, Myrtle straight up looks at Harry Potter's dick, like, three times. Uh, and, like, she intentionally looks at it, too. Like, she, she goes like that, and he's trying to, like, cover himself with bubbles and stuff. So... I was proven on that one. So the other ones, if, if anyone wanted to naysay me and think I'm just being crazy and making this stuff up, well, I, the movie just proved me right. Uh, Myrtle is literally a predator in this film. A child predator, so, yeah. Um, well, actually, she's a child herself, isn't she? But she's also an eternal ghost, so who knows? We don't have laws for ghosts, right? Um, one other thing, this is probably the worst one for a lot of people. Uh, at the risk of making myself look bad again, because this this section is always going to be suspicious, and I'm trying my best here. Um, the reason I don't care is because I have a European family and background. It's just not that big of a deal where we come from. But I realize Americans in particular will get pissed off at this. Uh, Hermione is 15 in this movie, and she kind of dates an 18-year-old. And... Uh, there's kind of a small relationship between them. They share a kiss, etc. So 15 and 18 year old age gap, that probably pisses a lot of people off. And I do think it belongs in this segment. Um, there was one more, but I'm totally blanking on what it is now. So if I remember, I'll put it in the comments. But this was my, it was my favorite one. Oh yeah, yeah, I just remembered it. I just remembered it. <clears throat> this one actually is not relevant to the movie at all, but it's just a little fun fact I had. Um, so... The one that, so one of the tri-wizard uh, contestants, Fleur de la Cour, uh, is actually not a kid at all. She's actually older than I am right now. She's like, at the time of filming that movie, I think she's like 40 years old now in real life, but at the time of filming that movie, she's older than I am today. Um, but the most important thing to say about that is uh, it's a children's film, and she's like kind of a nude model. Like, that's her career. So... I mean, she's like 10 out of 10. Highly recommend looking up that sauce if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was funny because she was casted to be a... I think she was supposed to be a minor, I think. So was, they basically they casted a nude model, a, a French nude model to uh, be a kid in this film. So yeah, <laughs> but anyways, that's it for that section. Please don't hang me, I promise you. This is coming from a good place. This is just for laughs, really. I don't think J.K. Rowling or the director is doing any of this on purpose. I am just simply saying, what if this happened in real life with a lot of these scenes? So, the negatives of the film, the actual negatives, because those aren't negatives. Those are, those are just weird little quirks. So, the negatives of this film, I don't think the main plot should have existed in the first place. And even if it did make sense and did exist, which it, it did, um, it's still not that interesting to me. The only reason it's half interesting is because of Voldemort and the Death Eaters. So the reason it should not have existed is because the rules are clearly established and then they're breached for no reason, really. Um, and this film also makes Dumbledore look like kind of a dumbass slash bad guy. He's sort of a bad guy in this because, <clears throat> hear me out, so Dumbledore still forces Harry to, presumably forces, because Harry obviously doesn't want to compete in it, so he never says, hey, can I tap out or can I find forfeit? He just keeps going inexplicably. Probably because it's a children's movie and they don't want to, they don't want to, like, tell the audience Harry's being forced, even though he is. They don't want to explicitly say it. But I believe, I definitely believe he's being forced to do this. So, the 14-year-old Harry is forced to do this death competition, Hunger Games style, um, because... I don't know, because Dumbledore is not stopping it. Even though Harry is three years under the age limit, um, he doesn't want to never voluntarily put his name in there. 
there's so many reasons. Oh yeah, and there's already a Hogwarts contestant, and there's supposed to be one. It's literally called Tri Wizard Tournament because there's three. There's three wizards competing because there's three schools in total in this universe. So to have a fourth contestant be underage, it just makes no sense to me at all. Putting that aside though, if we just forget that, it's still not that interesting to me. It's just a Olympic style ego bragging rights thing. And the reason Dumbledore looks like a bad guy is because at, uh, for the second test in this competition, so there's three tests. The first one is the stealing the dragon egg. This one, probably my least favorite, didn't really care about it. The second one is uh, you have to choose to rescue one single schoolmate from a uh, deadly lake filled of mermaid people that want to kill you. Um, so Dumbledore, I presumably, again, again, it's a children's movie, so they don't want to tell you this. They don't want to have a scene with Dumbledore saying, oh yeah, put the kids at the bottom. You know, it's just presumed. So presumably someone signed off permission to put Hermione, uh, um, Ron, and uh, Ginny, and a lot of other kids at the bottom of the lake drowning to death. Uh, and they're apparently like two of them are going to be left down there because there's only four contestants and there's more than four of them to save. But the mermaid evil people will only let you take one. So Dumbledore is not only allowing his students to be submerged at the bottom of a death trench, but uh, you, the, not all of them are going to be able to escape alive. And then the third test is the maze, which is probably the best, definitely the best one, uh, because this is when we get the Dumbledore stuff, Ralph Yens. And uh, Cedric really proves himself. I don't know why he's so nice in this film, but I respect it. So, yeah. But uh, I still like the film despite all that because it's just the cast, the dialogue, the rapport. Um, and I just like the drama. It felt natural to me. So we're going to give Harry Potter number four, Goblet of Fire, a six out of ten. Um, so this is now the second lowest currently but it most likely will be like honestly like maybe like fifth lowest because I think we're, I, mean, I think I'm gonna put all three of the Fantastic Beasts right at the bottom. I could be wrong, but that's what I presume I'm gonna do. Especially with the whole Johnny Depp uh, being abused by Amber Heard and then getting kicked off of that uh, off of that set. So that's gonna hurt the film even more. So when we get there. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see. You